Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this quick video I'm going to check two new F7 flight controllers and BLL32 4-in-1 ESCs by Rush FPV. In this video I'm going to go over their features and specs and show you how to install one of the stacks in a new build which is going to be featured in an upcoming video. Let's start with the new Blade F7 flight controller which is available in analog and digital versions. In terms of packaging, with both flight controllers you can find some stickers, the user manual with the relevant connection diagram, which by the way I'm going to include down below, silicon grommets for soft mounting the flight controller, and plenty of JST connectors for connecting your accessories. Along with the digital version, you're getting a harness for connecting the flight controller directly to a DJI Air unit, and along with the analog version, you're getting harnesses for connecting the flight controller to an FPV camera, and the Rush Tank 2 Ultimate video transmitter. In terms of specs, both flight controllers feature an F7 processor, an MPU 6000 Java chip, 4 full UART ports, a 16 MB of onboard memory for login black box data, their DC input voltage is between 7 to 40 volts. In addition to the self-locking JST connectors, on the bottom of the flight controllers you can find their matching pads, and they come with a rubber cover for protecting the micro USB connector. The differences, however, are that first of all, the flight controllers are not using the same firmware version. The digital version features a barometer and a 10 volts 3 ampere BEC for powering the Cadex Vista or the DJI Air unit. And the analog version features a built-in OSD, which is not present on the digital version. In addition, you should pay attention that on the bottom of the analog version, you can find pads which are going to enable you to select whether to power the FPV camera and the VTX using 5V or VBAT, and power the ready receiver using 3.3 or 5V. The center pad must be bridged with the right or left pads, as otherwise the connected accessories are not going to be powered up. Similarly, on the bottom of the digital version, you can find three pads which are going to enable you to select whether to power the ready receiver using 5 or 3.3 volts. As for dimensions, the weight of the digital flight controller is 9.2 grams, the analog version is slightly lighter and weighs 8.6 grams, and their external dimensions, which are identical, are 36.5 by 36.5 by 5.2 millimeters. In addition, both flight controllers are using semi-opened M4 30.5 by 30.5 mm mounting holes, which are reduced to M3 after using the included silicon grommets. Here you can see an example of a typical analog setup. The camera port, including the camera control pin, is connected to an FPV camera. The VTX port is connected to the Rush Tank Ultimate video transmitter. The video transmitter is powered using VBAT. The radio receiver is powered using 5 volts and the camera is powered using 5 volts. On a digital setup, the Cadex Vista or the DJI Air unit are going to be connected to the DJI HD port. If you'd like, you can use this port which is dedicated for connecting a GPS, and on both cases you will need to connect a ready receiver, and preferably use a 4-in-1 ESC. As for the new BLA32 4-in-1 ESCs, they are available in two versions. Sport, which has a current rating of 50 amperes and supports 48 kHz PWM frequency, and Super, which has a current rating of 60 amperes, features a more powerful MCU and supports 96 kHz PWM frequency. Except these differences, both speed controllers support up to 6S batteries. They are well protected and the motor pads can be found only on the top side of the speed controller. They are using 30.5 by 30.5 mm M3 mounting holes. The outer dimensions, which are identical, are 45 by 36.5 by 7.5 mm. The Super version weighs 16.8 grams, and the Sport version is a little bit heavier and weighs 17.5 grams. In addition, in terms of packaging, with both 4 in 1 ESCs, you're getting the user manual, some stickers, silicon grommets, a harness for connecting the 4 in 1 ESC with one of the Blade flight controllers and other JST connectors, which are going to enable you to customize the harness and connect the 4-in-1 ESC with different types of flight controllers. You probably noticed that no capacitors are bundled with the 4-in-1 ESCs, and that's because they are intended to be used with the new Rush FPV power filter board. The board comes with two 35 volt 330 microfarad capacitors, which needs to be installed and soldered to the board in the following manner and then you will need to solder the pads on the board to the battery pads of the 4-in-1 ESC. 
Now, as you can see, the power filter board and the 4-in-1 ESC are unified and their total length is 50.1 millimeters. Now, after installing the Rush FPV Blade Super 4-in-1 ESC and digital flight controller, this new build is ready and I'm going to test it soon in an upcoming video in which I'm going to be testing the TBS tracer system. So overall, after initially examining the new flight controllers and 4-in-1 ESCs by Rush FPV and installing one of the stacks on this new build, I can tell you that I'm impressed with their quality. I really like the adjust connectors which enable a clean and fast build and I'm glad that unlike the previous stack, in addition to these connectors, you can also find matching pads. We have to wait and see of course how this new stack is going to perform, but having previous experience with Rush FPV products, I don't think that I'm going to be disappointed and I'm quite intrigued to see how the 96kHz 4-in-1 ESCs are going to work when combining them with the ultra-fast TBS tracer system. One last thing before wrapping up this video, in case you're going to get a couple of these new boxes, don't throw them away, as you can easily combine them together and create a pretty cool storage box. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.